Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna go over each type of electromagnetic radiation in more detail. So let's get started. So the first two types of electromagnetic radiation we're gonna look at are radio and TV waves. Now I've grouped these together because just like we saw in the previous video, you can sometimes put radio and TV waves together because they have a similar wavelength. Now when we go through all of these, there are typical wavelengths and typical frequencies, but you don't really need to remember these numbers. You more just need to have an idea of where on the spectrum they would lie and the order of the types of electromagnetic radiation. So radio and TV waves both have a typical wavelength of 10 to the 3 meters, that's a thousand meters, and a typical frequency of about 10 to the 4 hertz. So the sources of radio and TV waves are things like electrical antennae, stars and lightning. And a detector of these radiations is simply an aerial. So you might think of a radio having an aerial sticking out of it. I'm sure new radios maybe don't have that, but older ones definitely did have that. And some applications where might you see radio and TV waves used? Well, they're used in telecommunications and things like entertainment to actually listen to the radio. Um, radio astronomy, so you get radio telescopes to detect radio waves and radars. The next type of radiation we have is microwaves. These have a typical wavelength of 10 to the minus 2 meters and a typical frequency of about 10 to the 8 hertz. Sources of microwaves include things like magnetrons, which you find inside a microwave, and cosmic sources, which just means sources from space beyond Earth's atmosphere. And a typical detector of microwaves is again an aerial. So some applications then of microwaves include again telecommunications, and that is actually how signals are transmitted and received to your mobile phone. In radio astronomy again, so we get things like microwave telescopes that can detect microwave signals, and microwave ovens is probably the easiest example to remember. So a microwave oven produces microwaves. Next we have infrared radiation, which is given the symbols capital I, capital R for short, IR. And the first thing to mention is that infrared waves are emitted from hot or warm objects. So for example, your own human body will emit infrared waves because you are a warm-blooded animal. And this means that infrared waves are simply just heat waves. So they cannot be seen by the human eye. Remember, it's only the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see. However, some animals can see in infrared, and we'll see that in a wee bit. So the typical wavelength of infrared is about 10 to the minus 5 meters, and it's got a typical frequency of about 10 to the 12 hertz. Sources of infrared include things like any heat emitting object and certain LEDs. Typical detectors of infrared are things like thermochromic film. So remember thermo just means heat and chromic refers to the type of material that will change colour when you apply heat to that film. So don't get this confused with photographic film for x-rays. It's called thermochromic film, not photographic film. And we can also say photodiode. So remember photo means light and the diode is a detector. You could also say that a detector of infrared because it's heat is simply a thermometer. And that's probably quite an easy one to remember because you will all hopefully know what a thermometer is. Applications of infrared include things like communication, astronomy. So again, we can have infrared telescopes, heating, treatment of muscle injuries, remote controls. So remote controls use an infrared beam to communicate with your TV or your device. And another interesting one is pit vipers hunting their prey. And pit vipers can actually detect heat where they see an image that looks something like this. So they'll see warmer areas in reds and oranges and they'll see cooler areas in blues and greens. And lastly, another application is infrared cameras. And infrared cameras have a range of uses. If you're lucky, your school might have access to a FLIR camera, which is a type of infrared camera initially designed for the military. Infrared cameras are used to produce thermal images or thermograms, so this thing here is called a thermogram, for night vision, to detect tumours or blood circulation. So in this case, you might see that the foot over here has a limited blood supply, whereas the foot over here has a decent blood supply to it. Another use of an infrared camera is to check building insulation. So you can point it at windows and around the edges of rooms to see if heat is being lost or if heat is remaining in the room. And also to detect overheating in mechanical systems. Next we have visible light and this one is probably more familiar to you since this is the one that we can see. And the visible spectrum you'll know consists of a range of different colours of light. So in a rainbow you will see the colours red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. So you should be familiar with these colours of the rainbow. And to remember the order, you could use Richard of York gave battle in vain, that mnemonic. Or you could remember the magical elf Roy G. Biv. I'll put a link in the description to that YouTube video. It's really good, so check it out if you haven't seen it before. Typical wavelengths of visible light then are 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, which is around 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So for visible light, the wavelength region goes from about 400 nanometers up to 700 nanometers for red light. And that range is quite important to remember. So 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers is the short range of wavelengths that we can see in everyday life. Typical frequencies of visible light are about 10 to the 15 hertz, 
and some sources would be things like stars, they produce their own light, light bulbs, LEDs, which are light emitting diodes, lasers and others. Detectors include things like the retina of the human eye, again a photodiode which we saw earlier, a CCD which is a charge couple device which you might find in digital cameras, and photographic film. I wouldn't maybe recommend remembering photographic film for visible light because that's a good one to bring up as a detector of x-rays. Applications of visible light include again communications, astronomy, so optical telescopes, vision, so actually seeing things, laser eye surgery, which this picture is referring to here, where they slice the cornea and peel it back and they fire powerful laser beams into your eye to try and correct your vision, and tattoo removal. So you'll see this picture here refers to that very painful process of tattoo removal, where again you can apply very powerful lasers to remove ink from under the skin deep within cells. Next we have ultraviolet. Now you probably know this as UV rays or UV, and this is because it's on the back of sun cream bottles where it says protects against UVA and UVB, usually doesn't say protects against UVC because we are already protected from UVC by the ozone layer. Now ultraviolet waves are emitted from the sun. The ozone layer absorbs much of these protecting us on earth, that's the UVC, but UVA and UVB can still get through the ozone layer which can damage our skin if we're overexposed to it. So overexposure to ultraviolet waves can cause skin cancer. Typical wavelengths are 10 to the minus 8 meters and typical frequency is about 10 to the 16 hertz. Sources of ultraviolet include sunlight, fluorescent bulbs and things called black lights. Detectors include fluorescent chemicals and photodiodes. And applications of ultraviolet radiation include treatment of skin conditions, so if you've got quite bad acne, you could buy your own ultraviolet light and this might help clear up your skin, it might not. You've also got security markings that look a bit like this on banknotes and credit cards and passports and typical forms of ID. Moving on to x-rays now, x-rays have a typical wavelength of about 10 to the minus 10 meters and a typical frequency of about 10 to the 18 hertz. Now, typical sources of x-rays are x-ray tubes and cosmic sources, so again sources from space. A detector of x-rays is photographic film, and that's the clear film that turns black or foggy when x-rays hit it. So in this picture here you'll see that the areas that are black are where the x-rays have passed through and hit the photographic film, whereas the areas that are white, i.e. the bones, the dense tissue, that is going to appear white because the x-rays have been stopped by it and absorbed by it. Some applications of x-rays include detecting broken bones. Now be careful here, don't fall into the trap of seeing broken bones, because unless the bones have actually broken through the skin, you're technically not physically seeing the bones themselves, you're seeing a picture of the bones, or you're detecting them. Another application is x-ray scanners at airport security, so they use x-ray scanners to try and see different objects in your luggage. So different objects, depending on their density, will appear at different colours. So you'll see we've got blues, greens and oranges here, but you'll see the gun there typically stands out as a kind of solid object. Another application you might want to remember for x-rays is x-ray telescopes. So just like any other type of radiation, we can pretty much say there's going to be a type of telescope to detect that radiation. Lastly we have gamma rays. Gamma rays have a typical wavelength of about 10 to the minus 12 meters and a typical frequency of about 10 to the 20 hertz. And a source of gamma rays is nuclear decay. So that's when the nucleus inside an atom undergoes a decay where it emits a particle or a wave for the atom to become more stable. Now detectors include a Geiger-Muller tube or a GM tube, you might know that as, and photographic film. Now a Geiger-Muller tube is probably the best one to remember for gamma rays because that's the one that makes clicking noises when you come close to radiation. Applications of gamma rays include medical imaging using a gamma camera. So what happens is a patient is injected with something called a radioactive tracer and this radiation passes around the body and it emits gamma rays as it does that. So the gamma rays will pass out of the body and hit this ring of detectors called a gamma camera. And most hospitals will have a couple of gamma cameras because they're cheaper than MRI scanners and CT scanners. Another application which is probably more well known is that we can treat cancerous tumours or kill cancerous cells using gamma rays because they're the most dangerous and the most energetic, remember. So what we can do is we can fire gamma rays at different angles and focus them on a cancer cell or a tumour. That way they're going to cause minimum damage to all this healthy tissue, the blue region around here, whilst causing maximum damage to where they focus at this region here, which is where you want them to do the most damage. And again an application would be in astronomy where we've got gamma ray telescopes. Telescopes. So just to summarise then, if we have a look at this table, I've picked out a few sources, detectors and applications from what we've just looked at. So we've got types of electromagnetic radiation, source, detector and application. 
So the radio and TV waves, remember a source for them was the antenna and a detector is the aerial, and applications include telecommunications and radio telescopes. A source of microwaves was the magnetron, and a detector was the aerial, and applications included microwave ovens and mobile phone communication. A detector of infrared was any heat emitting object like your body, and a detector was thermochromic film or a thermometer. Applications included remote controls and infrared cameras and treating muscle injuries. A source of visible light was a laser, and a detector was the retina of the eye or a CCD, a charge couple device. Applications of visible light included laser eye surgery and tattoo removal. A source of ultraviolet light was sunlight, and a detector was fluorescent and chemicals, and applications included treating skin conditions, for example acne, and checking security markings on banknotes. For x-rays, we had an x-ray tube for the source, photographic film for the detector, and some applications included detecting broken bones and scanning bags at airport security. Lastly, we have gamma rays, where a source was nuclear decay, and a detector was the Geiger-Muller tube. Now, applications included killing cancerous cells or destroying cancerous tumours, and medical imaging using the gamma camera. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful, if you did give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.